Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Saturday, July 6, 2019. This will be fairly quick because there's only really one area to talk about, and we'll get to that uh, right here over the parts of the Tennessee Valley. First of all, real quick, in the Central Pacific, the remnants of Barbara here, not any kind of a threat at all. Uh, it's going to just dissipate into a remnant low here. As that skeletal remains um, bundle of clouds moves eventually south of the Hawaiian Islands, so no problems uh, associated with Barbara. Uh, now we have Cosme over here in the eastern Pacific, and if we look at its track over the next several days, might make it to hurricane strength. Uh, kind of doubtful here. The pattern is changing out this way, so it's not quite as favorable overall. Plus, this is uh, forming and has formed a little bit farther to the north and west, and the cooler water and the more stable air mass is much closer to this system, and so it's going to weaken uh, pretty quickly and have a fairly short lifespan. Now, back to this area here. I know that we have seen systems develop from mesoscale convective complexes or vortices or systems, whatever you want to call it, a thunderstorm complex that is fairly well organized, kind of like these tropical waves that come off of Africa. A lot of those are large complexes of thunderstorms. They're a little bit different, though. Those are literally these waves of low pressure embedded within the easterlies out here, whereas over the United States and, you know, and more generally speaking, North America here, the continental U.S., uh, you do get these complexes of thunderstorms, these mesoscale convective systems or mesoscale convective complex, or vortex, whatever. It's an impulse. It's an area of energy. It's a seed. That's the key here. It is a seed that could be planted, and uh, that's the analogy here, that you know this could drop south and try to develop somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico, or not. That's why it is uh, designated as an area of low potential. And if we mouse over it, you see what uh, the forecaster here, Eric Blake, was talking about. Uh, low potential to develop, but only 20% over the next five days. And it is a trough of low pressure, so it's just a, a, an impulse of energy over uh, western Kentucky, Tennessee, and northern Mississippi. It's forecast to move out over the northeastern Gulf, where a low pressure area could form early next week. And then gradual development of the system is then possible if it drifts westward over the northern Gulf through midweek. <clears throat> so it's a matter of how far into the Gulf this gets, so forth and so on. Uh, real quick, a look at the satellite imagery this afternoon. You see uh, Cosme right here, some upper-level winds impacting it. Just not the ideal conditions that we saw <clears throat> that gave birth. Sorry, must be some Saharan dust in my office today. Uh, not the ideal conditions that we saw that gave birth and whatnot to uh, Barbara that allowed it to become a very strong hurricane. Uh, some high-level moisture getting pulled off into Mexico and actually way on up all the way. <laughs> a little bit of a connection there, right, I guess, uh, but really no issues there from Cosme. Uh, the system that we're watching right here, this is it, very innocuous looking in the satellite imagery, so... Let's go to the vorticity signature <clears throat> and peer through the cloud cover and see what we can see. And right there is the energy, the vorticity uh, in the atmosphere associated with this trough of low pressure overall. And that's the impulse. That's the piece of energy that is forecast by the models. I'll show you this in just a moment to kind of drop south and then into the northeast gulf. So it either kind of rides along the coastline and you know creates unsettled weather, rain showers, thunderstorms, periods of heavy rain, which in some of these areas in the Florida Panhandle and southwest Georgia, southeastern Alabama, that's needed in the devastated forest area from Michael. You could use that rain. Uh, or maybe this gets out and drops a little farther to the south and has a longer time and tries to develop into a bona fide tropical cyclone. So here's what we're going to do over the next few days is we will track this feature right here. This is this is not a forecast. This is an actual analysis product from the University of Wisconsin 
their Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies, and we are looking at the vorticity signature of uh, a good part of the Western Hemisphere. Notice, for what it's worth, a little vorticity energy showing up out here south of the Cabo Verde Islands, also known as the Cape Verde Islands, and, uh, you know, we'll see. A little weak signature right there. Not much coming through the islands as of now. Uh, pretty dry, tranquil pattern. So this will be the area of interest right here. And we will watch and see as this evolves and moves down into the northeast Gulf of Mexico. Looking at the European from the tropical tidbit site, the ECMWF, this is also at the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere for what it's worth. So we're looking at about 5,000 feet up. That's what that means. 850 millibars is a meteorological way of describing a certain layer of the atmosphere. And uh, even on, let's see if we can go back to the initial condition. Yep, even at the initial conditions, the euro shows that same impulse right there. Uh, kind of at the confluence of where... Uh, Arkansas, Tennessee, and southeastern Missouri come together, and you can see that that equates pretty well to what the analysis shows here from the University of Wisconsin site. So there's the initial condition. That's the feature you want to watch right there. So let me put this frame by frame. The European here on this particular model set, you only get um, a very coarse overall resolution and, you know, every 24 hours, okay, so you don't get the high-res stuff that you do if you pay for the subscription at, like, you know, WeatherBell or WeatherModels.us or whatever. <clears throat> this is something nice that Levi provides from Tropical Tidbits for free. So anyhow, this is what it looked like Saturday morning. Here's Sunday morning. There's the impulse right there. All right, let's go to Monday morning, and there it is over southeastern Georgia right there. All right, make sure I get my pointer back. Uh, that's 48 hours out. There's 72, 96. It moves into the northeast gulf. You see it right in here. I'll take the telestration away so we can see it better. Uh, at 120 hours, it's trying to organize. So at this point, what we will want to look for is to see if this verifies. I mean, I know that sounds obvious. And, and what I mean by that, does... The forecast, this is five days out, so we're talking Thursday morning. So first of all, does the forecast verify at all? And secondly, if it does, when we look at this product over the next few days, how does this system evolve? Can we watch it drop south and then into the Gulf, and what will it look like? Is it going to be kind of elongated and diffuse, maybe like this out here? This is just some storminess over the Atlantic, not a bundled tropical system. Um, or does it start to concentrate its energy uh, like Cosme out here, the tropical storm? It's kind of a weak storm, but nevertheless, you see the difference here. So that's what we will track over time. Uh, first of all, does the model verify as we go through time? Does it drop the system? Is it just kind of spread out energy or what? And we have the tools that we can do that. We can monitor these things. So that's day five. Here's day six. A little bit more concentrated, and finally by day seven on Saturday morning, uh, a week out, you know, maybe a tropical depression or a tropical low in this particular model run. That's what it's indicating. We know this can change. This is a week out. So let's watch it together and see what happens. Just for comparison, the GFS, the global forecast system, same Model field, 850 millibars, same time frame, the 12Z run from today, but this is much higher resolution in terms of your temporal, the time element. You get this every uh, three hours instead of every 24 hours. So let's just scroll through. Uh, there's 36, 48, 72, and just let me just back up. So just watch this corridor through here. Does anything jump out as bundling the energy as we go through the next five days. Not really. You see that? Take the telestration away. There's just not much there. Not much associated with that. Uh, see? Little wave, little energy, maybe right in here. So that's a pretty big difference that 
Uh, the GFS at 150 hours, there's 168. So that's a week out. So comparing the two roughly there, that's pretty good, you know, lining them up. Yeah, that's a pretty big difference. The European more concentrated, the GFS more loosely concentrated overall, loosely organized. That's loosely concentrated as a oxymoron. Uh, but you got your front draped across the area. So maybe a rainy pattern overall compared to the European model, which suggests a more concentrated focusing of the energy. So again, folks, that gives us something to watch uh, in case you're bored. <laughs> you know, that's what we do. We will see what happens, and I'll tell you what I see. And of course, on Twitter and elsewhere, there are, are other folks that are very dependable. I'll talk about them some more tomorrow. Uh, I do. I want to make sure you understand, you know, I don't know everything, and the day that I know everything, I'm going to quit. Because why do any anything at all if you know everything about it? That's when you retire and you take up some other hobby. In my case, that's going to be astrophotography sometime down the road. But I digress. No, I don't know everything, and I like to point out uh, other people, uh, many of whom are smarter than me. But more importantly than that is the crowdsourcing of reliable information. In this world of uh, fake news, BS news, and that translates to the weather as well. It's important to know who you can rely on to get a consensus as to what may or may not happen with any weather situation. A blizzard coming up for the Northeast in the wintertime, um, you know, a severe weather outbreak in the Great Plains or the Deep South or whatever. And then in the case of tropical systems, yes, there are people who you can count on. And we'll talk about that more and more starting um, actually Monday, not tomorrow, sorry. Uh, so I'll address this again tomorrow with a quick update, and we'll see uh, how, how this goes. Maybe tomorrow it'll be more interesting, whatever, or maybe less interesting. We'll see. That's the, uh, I don't want to say the beauty of this, but that's the intrigue is you just never know for sure. Have a great rest of your Saturday. As always, I appreciate you tuning in from whatever device you're watching and listening to me from. It's awesome to have you there on the other side. I do appreciate it. I am Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.